Hello and welcome back. We're going to have a quick look at the Princess Elizabeth here. She was released in 1970 in the form we're going to see her here today. This was catalogue number R258G and she came with alternative names. There doesn't seem to be any other information printed on the box here other than this sticky paper label. Let's have a look at the other end. Very smart brown cardboard sleeve and there's been no information stuck here at all. It doesn't even look like it's been peeled away. We'll just slide her out and have a quick look at her while she's still in the box. So it's very tidy condition this box. Cellophane looks to be in good shape all the way along. Just look at it, absolutely beautiful. That very bold box. We'll just turn it around and have a look at the, the reverse side. You see that excellent graphics on the back of the box there. As I mentioned a moment ago, this model came with alternative names and numbers. This sheet's interesting in that it's got a slightly different catalogue number here, R258NS. The NS version of this model was released in 1971. It did also have the alternative names, just like this one, but she had Synchro Smoke and the Chuff Chuff Sound in the tender and crew for the first two years. So we'll just pop that down and have a look at the, the names and the numbers. Let's pop that in there. We've got this great little cellophane packet and we've got three items in here. We'll just pop the cellophane packet down. And we've got this little sheet which tells us how to apply the numbers and the names. So you assume that you would just reverse the process to take the existing ones off. Although I suspect damage could be caused if you weren't too careful. It's a great little sheet of numbers there. Really nice little things to have. I don't think I'll be changing the names and numbers on this model. We'll just pop those down and have a swift look at the locomotive in this great bright yellow and black form packaging. She seems to be in a slightly semi-matte varnish on her. Great finish. That lovely foil label there. And I really like the fact that we've got the model number here in the corner of the back form packaging. R258. I think that's just a, a great thing to do. Now, she does have crew, although half of the crew seems to have run away. It seems to have gone missing over the years. But I'm sure we could find some extra crew at some point. A really lovely model. We'll just get this pair of diesel rail cars back into the passing loop here. Now these were model R15C, sold in two car sets. They're available in this livery in 1970-71. to 71. We'll just switch those points and then we'll open number 11 into the station there. And then we'll bring out the Princess Elizabeth. And she's got some LMS liveried coaches with her today. Look at that, just such a smooth running model. We'll close those points behind them there and off round the layout we go. These LMS coaches the maroon livery came along in 1969 and stayed in the catalogue till 1977. There were model number R422A for the composite and 423A for the brake. The set of coaches I have here today come safely from the Hornby Railways period, indeed they have Hornby on the bottom of them. The wheels and axles are all one plastic mould with white rims. Now I think we're going to bring her gently to a stop at the station here and then we'll have a swift look at the locomotive. She's in absolutely terrific condition and that paint finish is just superb, that semi-matte varnish and of course she's finished in LMS liveries, I was trying at the time, we're trying to produce models in famous railway company liveries, we'll just have a look down the other side and I think she's hardly run at all, we'll see the, the wheels in a moment, she's definitely run but she's been very very looked after, had a very sheltered life. Just terrific isn't it? You can see a little bit of paint loss there inside the cab where the, the crew has been glued in and one part of it is sadly missing. Excellent detail there on the back of the tender, lovely and crisp. Just look at the coal load too, nice and fine. Bit of a hatch moulded into the old cab roof there and a couple of safety valves. And those boiler bands picked out in that wonderful deep yellow or possibly gold type paint there. And that handrail running right the way along there just picked out in silver. Just looking inside the cab, there is a little bit of detail to be had here which is quite nice. Oh, we can see where we've lost that paintwork, where the other member of the crew must have been glued in at some point and snapped off. 
You can see the, the draw bar here, which would join to the tender with the pin there to hold the two parts of the model together. And we've got some interesting detail on the inside edge of the tender there. This screw holds the bodywork onto the chassis. The smoke box door has some quite nice detail and this handrail has been picked out in silver. It's seen hardly any track time whatsoever. It really is in beautiful condition. Now this model was also available with plated wheels at some point, but this one just has the regular steel tyres. We've got the magnet here which gives it that magnahesian effect and gives it that extra pulling power. Beautiful fluted coupling rods. Plastic wheels on single metal axles on this front bogey. Again, we've got plastic wheels here, but on their sleeve this time on a single metal axle. They just spin freely there. Just look at the base of the tender here. You can see we've got the old open axle boxes. We've got plastic sleeved wheels on single metal axles. We've got Triang's name and a couple of catalogue numbers here. So this, this tender base goes back some time. So R30 was the catalogue number for the tender on the Black Princess. R31 was a catalogue number for the tender on the Green Princess. The original Maroon Princess, the tender had a catalogue number of R34. The variation on this tender in 1971 when they upgraded the model was R34N. Now that was available separately so you could upgrade your existing model from 1970 to have the chuff chuff sound in the tender. Just like the rest of this model, the inside is also really clean and tidy. We've got the original catalogue number there for the Princess, R50, Triang's name, made in England, and a little bit of overspray here from the black paintwork, and here's the slot where the chassis clips into. This is the part of the chassis which clips into that slot we just saw in the bodywork there. Screw holding the motor down onto the chassis, motor looks in really tidy condition. Here we have a great view of the valve gear and the drive wheels. We can just see again the magnet hiding behind this rear drive wheel which provides a magnahesian effect there to the back wheels. I hadn't pointed out that we do also have a magnet hiding behind this one too. So we have that effect on the front wheels as well. The slightly later variant of this model having the chuff chuff sound in the tender, model number R258NS, was available between 1971 and 74. Also had the synchro smoke unit. Just look at that speeding off into the distance there. Now we're going to bring her around onto the outside line through points number seven there. Looking very well behaved through there. Now there never was a restaurant car to go with this series of coaches sadly. Storming into the third radius curve now and up the incline. And we'll bring her gently to a stop just about here and we'll have a swift look at the coaches. These LMS Maroon livery coaches came along in about 1969, although they didn't show up in the catalogue till 1970. The ones I have are slightly later, they've got Hornby on the bottom of them and they have white rimmed wheels. I think they were just really a direct replacement for the earlier maroon livery coaches which Trying Railways released in the early 60s and their last year in the catalogue was 1969. We'll just pop that down and we'll have a swift look at the, the LMS composite. A quick look down the side. Very similar moulding, I think it's the same. We've got different numbering and we've got this LMS lettering there. And a swift look underneath. And we've got these plastic wheels which incorporate the axles as well, so these are much later. And we can see Hornby's name and built in Britain. And that's just the, the standard end detail there. Platform grey roofs. Let's just switch it around and have a look at the other side. You can see we've got the old seating detail and corridor detail on the inside with a handrail printed on the, the glazing strip there. We'll just pop that down and have a look at the brake. And again, same sort of stuff. Really quite nice lettering. There's a little wear to the, the lining on these, but somebody's painted the seating unit in this one maroon by the looks of it. And again, when did you see white or cream seats on a on a railway carriage in real life. So a swift look underneath. And again, we've got built-in Britain there and Hornby. Same plastic wheels with plastic axles. And we've got that nice detail at the, the guard's end of the coach here. And like that just follows on from the earlier coaches from the early 60s. It seems on reading Pat Hammond's books and looking at the catalogues, 
the model number R258 NS became R258 AS in 1972. It seems also the coaches had a change in 1976, the brake became R936 and the composite became R935, both gaining silver seal wheels at this point. Whatever the model numbers, these are great toys to have. If you look back again next week, we'll have something else from this late Triumph Hornby period, but I'm going to leave you this time with this terrific cutaway picture of the Princess from page 18 of the 1973 catalogue. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye now.